You can tell by the cutting torches that they have begun to tear down the old LM. Welcome to this Starbase Summary. If you are new to the channel, you don't know the rules, I watch the video, I tell you what I see, you tell me what you see down in the comments, and we try to do uh, up-to-date summaries of what's going on out at Starbase without a ton of analysis or anything like that. This is almost like a reaction video to watch what they're doing and get you fresh content for those people who are not able to watch Starbase Live 24-7. There you can see I'm opening up the bottom of the OLM to get to some of the uh, parts inside. This we're going to jump all the way over here and move a manifold around. We've been watching this for days now, all of the work of deconstructing not only that old launch mount, the original launch mount, um, over there at Pad 1, but also the supporting GSE. Jumping back over to the production site, more of these Gigabay columns have been arriving and moving around. Great shot there. You can see the plate on the bottom that gets bolted down into the concrete. Uh, wow, those trucks, though. Forms that were already poured and uh, placed and have their bolts and studs and whatever you want to call it down below. But we continue to see not only the Gigabay, but the massive cranes that uh, will put the Gigabay into place rise out at that site. Over here, back at the old LM, I'm just going to say that every time in this video, I think, uh, you can see all of the sparks happening. Of course, this video caught by our robotic reporter out there in the field, one of our 24-7 Starbase live cams that captures things that are interesting for y'all to see, even when it's the middle of the... Whoa! <laughs> oh my! All right, I guess you just cut that thing and it just swings down and then sparks fall out of the bottom of it. Man, it looks like somebody hit it with a lightsaber. It's, that's that's what happens a lot of times when you cut a hose or a power conduit with a lightsaber, like sparks come out the end of it that you've cut. And that's almost exactly what it looks like. Let me say, I mean, there's going to be more sparking here, but look at the super up-close angle. This isn't one of our robotic, uh, robotic reporters. This is our Mark One human reporter out there, Gage. Massive thanks to Gage for uh, running out when we saw that this sort of detailed work was happening and getting some of those close-up shots for us. Big thanks, Gabe. Put, Gage. Put some uh, love down below for Gage. Seeing some depressurizing and stuff like that. Again, a lot of that's just getting torn out. Uh, actually, that one might have been Pad 2 testing. Yeah, that was Pad 2 actually venting. That was not getting torn out. But here in this scene, Gage caught some of the retract tests. You got your LOX quick disconnect and you got your uh, methane quick disconnect there on the two sides of where the booster would sit. The booster sits in between those two things. And uh, you put the booster in place, you get it all aligned, these things zip, plug into it, and then during takeoff, they come out like that. And if you watch, scroll it back and look, you can actually see the shield in front. Sort of, There it is. You can see it there. You see that shield sort of swing up. If you scroll back, you can see the, swing, the shield swing down again. Now, these are slow tests right now. These are not, uh, what, that first one was 7x speed, but here's a real-time speed. They're not, I don't think, running these at full speed yet. I think they're checking clearances and uh, tolerances and, uh, I guess, friction. Like, is it moving clearly? Is it hitting anything it's not supposed to? Of course, that back is going to be armored shielded as well. We see a place where uh, that'll all be bolted into place. And I think we've got those covers sitting on the ground over at the Sanchez site. But these things are super cool, the way that they plug into the rocket and uh, fill it up with consumables so that it can take off. Down there at the bottom of the Tyrell headquarters, we can see some venting happening down the bot. How many people actually know that? Because we titled a video that. Anyways, let me know down below. Hey, here's a nil guy. These things are actually really weird-looking horse cow deers. Uh, they were actually not native to Texas, introduced by the King Ranch back in the 1920s. I think they originally came over as zoo animals. And then the King Ranch down there near Kingsville, Texas, it's sort of north of Harlingen, all the way up to Corpus, right? Uh, released these into the wild as potential sport and game animals. So they have uh, flourished down there in South Texas because I guess they like the environment. Good for them. But you see them around there a little bit. Here we've got pad, I think that was one again. Sorry, I was talking about the nil guy. I, I'm from down there, by the way. I, I had family that worked on the King Ranch and that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm tuned in with what uh, those things are and why they look so weird. They're not from here. But seas are just capturing some sunset venting and miscellaneous uh, pipes 
there in the foreground. Again, if I say a word wrong or something like that, no take backs. I don't get to pause and edit it. I just keep plugging along so that we can get this to you as fresh as possible. Cool sunset shot there from Caesar. Say that ten times fast. Here we've got a hole cut in the shielding of the OLM. There you go. Bloop. Little quarter plate just sort of fell off. We're going to get a, another quarter. Bloop. It's gone. Nice. That, that camera's a mile away, so that's a little tough to catch at night, but when things happen at 2 or 3 a.m., I don't know exactly what time that happened, uh, we like to get those shots and just show you that it's happening. There's a boom for one of those tower cranes being installed, and we're starting to get some beams on the Giga Bay. We've been seeing a lot of uh, the columns, the, the vertical components, go in, right? And now we're starting to see the parts go in between. Oh, hey. Look, the door, the garage door opened, and we're going to sneak in a Ship 39 AF2 section. Look, it's already got some tiles on it. <laughs> they put that back down again. You know, keeping that door closed as much as you can for, uh, I guess, dust and debris and FOD control and poten potentially environmental control as well um, is important, so you don't see them open that doors for too much time. Back to the OLM again. Sorry. Here they're cutting more pieces out of it. I promised you they were starting to tear down the old LM. I don't think you could take a wrecking ball to it. It's not the glass window of a cyber truck. You, you need to actually cut it. You can't just hit it with a, a piece of steel. You need to cut it. And that time they didn't just let it drop. They removed it with a crane. Now here's all the way over at Massey's. You can see the Boca Chica Air Force uh, patrolling above. Got some new clamps installed on that ship static fire stand. They've been hard at work over at Massey's to try and uh, get it back operational so they can move their testing of their future ships back over to Massey's instead of having to jury-rig the launch mount to do so. So, now yeah, these test tanks have been sitting here for a while now. That's that new design for the hot staging ring. Notably missing is anything to direct the thrust in one direction or another. Remember, they left some of those plates on uh, in the crown sort of design to help flip the booster a specific way. And you don't see that there yet. I don't think that that means it's not going to happen. Um, I just think that we haven't seen what that solution is going to be yet. We've been seeing this a little bit, this electrical bunker right near the entrance to Massey's, a, a big hardened structure that's a good distance away from the actual test stands. So if a test stand goes boom, you don't lose all of your electrical control equipment, I would guess. It's a wide shot of the production site, and then we're going to also see the, uh, I hope that was a production site, the launch site's there in the background. It's a new construction. I think that was across the street from the Mission Control, the Ad Astra school area. Huh, there's a cutie arm in the background. I yeah, can't see it too well. With all the cyber trucks in the foreground, here you go. Let's zoom in and see that ship quick disconnect arm that'll be mounted on the tower. Again, getting it as ready as they can down here. Back to the school real quick. We did see reports of uh, some permit filings for a larger $20 million school over there near the old mission control. It's sort of between Massey's and the production site. So what that construction there might be, might be the beginnings of that uh, Ad Astra Phase 1 school. That big Made in USA, you slap a flag on it, you put Made in USA. You know, something I appreciate it. We need to be able to uh, put steel together. And this is actually some steel that we've put together so that we can put more steel together. I like it. It's a tool. It makes the tools. It makes the buildings here. It's building the machine, building the factory that will make spaceships. But it starts down uh, micro style <laughs> with these sorts of jobs that are critical to getting uh, all the cool stuff. The big showy rockets that take off. Need a dude sitting in that crane, uh, stacking up the steel the way it goes. It needs the guys down on the beams and columns and pillars, bolting those things together. It needs the welders putting all that stuff together. The rockets don't magically appear, and the robots aren't doing it yet. So big thanks to all the crews that uh, are getting that construction done so that SpaceX can build some rockets. Another cloudy shot of the launch site there. That orbital pad 2 is in the foreground. This is going to be a fantastic shot when this takes off because the smoke is going to come towards the camera to the left and away from the camera to the right, and you'll have a clear shot into that pad. Something that was notably missing on that pad 1 a stool sort of design it was really tough to get a clear shot of that pad because the exhaust just went in every direction. We would try to hide our cameras in the lee, like like behind the legs, to try and get a little bit more time of visibility before the plume sort of obscured your shot. But with this nice, controlled NASA-style pad, uh, we're going to have hopefully more open areas as those plumes will be directed in two primary directions. Demolition continues, I guess technically is that work? 
on the OLM? Demolition on the OLM? Either way, it's work. There's going to be more work when they put another one in. But uh, we were right, I guess, about those green cut lines. Why don't they take the door off? Are, are they just going to cut right through that door on the right-hand side? Or is that they just drew it they didn't worry about the door? But they are going to debolt that thing and drop it. I remember when Flight 1 threw one of those doors like a few hundred feet, a few hundred yards. Um, it blew one of the doors off the hinges and that thing laid in the, the flats or in the dune area like bent in half like a taco for a very pretty good amount of time. I don't actually know if it's still there. There's the office building with the cyber trucks and other vehicles driving around in front. <laughs> so another one. <laughs> there you go. That apartment in the background, we haven't seen it in a couple days, but a good shot there. The flag waving, the sun going down, the palm trees in the foreground, and that office building. Hey, folks. Again, it's been a Starbase summer. Appreciate y'all watching. That's what we do here, trying to get you the content as fast as you can. My name's John. If you want to watch in other languages, you can use the settings menu to choose different language tracks. We're working on getting uh, getting some German back in there for you. We need a German commentator to help us. Adrian is not uh, doing that anymore. But for now, we appreciate y'all watching, and we will see you nerds later.